let me rewrite this uh, local diffusion matrix. And it's not only for the second element, you see that if we follow the same procedure in other elements, we will end up still with the same result because we've got exactly the same shape functions and test functions. Um, so one divided by delta x minus one divided by delta x minus one divided by delta x, one divided by delta x. Okay. And let's move to showing how the assembly process would look like. Um, and let's do it for a precession mesh, and let's make the mesh unstructured in 1D. The unstructured mesh in 1D would be it's the first node, it's the second, third, and fourth node, okay? It's a very simple example, yet fully general. So it nicely shows how to assemble the finite element matrices um, on unstructured meshes. Let's assume it's the first element, this one is the second, that one is the third. Who's, who's familiar with the implementation of find element method, even in these simple cases? Okay. Uh, so first, let's determine the size of the matrix and size of the vector of unknowns. Clearly, four nodes, so four unknowns in the system U1, U2, U3, U4. So we need to come up with the matrix, which is also four by four. And let's start doing that. The procedure, the efficient procedure to do it, because you can come up with many ways to, to loop over elements and nodes, but the efficient procedure is the following. Let's loop over elements. So in our case, it means let's take, um, let me call element, it's one, two, or three. Mm. And what we are doing, okay, once we've selected the element and we know right now our element index is one, let's see what it is. So we are, we are looking at the mesh and then extracting this single find element. And let's see, uh, it's, it's first and second local node, and it's important, these, these notions, first and second local node, but it's the first and third global node. Okay, and now let's, now the procedure says you need to calculate the local find element matrix of that particular element we, we've already computed. And luckily, because all our elements are exactly the same, then the local matrices are exactly the same for each element. But if you've got like a well, changing size or whatever else, then clearly for, for each element, you need to, to compute the, the local matrix. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to plug it appropriately to the equations. And we did the following way. Let's see, the, right now we've got the global indices one and three. 
1 and 3. So this row should contribute to the first global row. This local row should contribute to the third global row because this node should render the equation for U3. Hmm? Okay? So what happens is, let me write this way, it's D, it's D11, I don't, I don't want to write 1 over dx all the time because it won't show you anything. Uh, so let me call it d11, d12, d21, d22. So it's d11 of the first element. Well, where do we plug d12? We We need to plug D12 here, D12 of the first element. Then we need to plug D21 here and D22 of the first element here. So far everything good? Yes. Okay, so we've already exploited the whole local matrix of the first element. Uh, it has already contributed to the global matrix. So it's the end of the loop for E equals one and the, we are entering the, the second find element. Okay, second find element right now means local nodes are still one and two, but the global nodes are right now four and one. So, and this will be a bit more tricky, as you will see. Uh, because right now we see that this one is, uh, is, is associated with global node 4, 1, 4, and 1. So already we will see that D11 contributes here, D11 of the second uh, element, then D12 will contribute global row 4, global column 1, so here, D12, two, two. well, maybe not extremely astonishing, but see, uh, you had some order here, right now it's flipped, no magic, but Maybe not the obvious fact. Um, okay, we are continuing. We, we need to plug this into the first global row, global row. So here, 2, D2, 1 of the second uh, element and plus D2, 2 of the second element. Right now, an important comment. First of all, you already see that two elements contribute to the, to the global entry of the matrix for, well, which element, for, for which node, for the first node. Why? Because is the element, both the first and the second element contribute to it, and this is how you actually have a rendering the equations that we know that the shape function is a, that the test function is a global test function. But first we have only computed that the part of the integral coming from this portion of the test function and then in the other element of the other portion of the test function and we are adding the contributions in the global matrix. Uh, a technical comment when it comes to implementation, if you're implementing in MATLAB, then you would write, uh, well, you wouldn't implement it like that, but the naive way of implementing that is like saying, okay, A11 one, one equals 
a one one plus something, you wouldn't do it in, my, in MATLAB because it would be awfully slow. Um, uh, but you've got no other choice in MATLAB with uh, with incrementing the the um, the entry of the matrix. Uh, the if you do it in C C plus plus, remember to use plus equal. Um, and it's really a very, very common mistake in the implementation of find, find elements that you simply do that and your code doesn't work. <laughs> like it works, but it gives wrong results. And believe me, it's, it's, it's very, very easy to do it even if you know that you should be adding uh, entries. Uh, okay, let's finalize it with the third element, but I think right now it should be clear. Three, two, in the global sense. So, um, three, two, three, two. Um, so, three, three is plus. D11 of the third element, well, it doesn't make sense. Third node, yes, it makes sense. Third node is where both the first and the th third element give contributions. Mm, now, 3, 2, so th we are 3, 2, D1, 2 of the third one, D, sorry, D22 should be here, D22, and um, column three, column three, second row, so D21 of the third element, and we are done. <laughs> Important thing, it's global diffusion matrix. And local diffusion matrix, uh, well, maybe not self-evident, but believe me, still a symmetric matrix and symmetric positive defined matrix as always the diffusion matrix. Mm. Questions to that procedure? So what we have covered with that example that we have gone through in details, uh, first what we've covered is the idea how to discretize the equations, then we've said that you can actually decompose that into thing about local matrices rather than about the global matrix because it's much easier to build the efficient um, matrix assembly procedure this way. Um, we've covered the connectivity and unstructured, unstructured meshes already and we have shown how the assembly process looks like uh, well, assembly, assembly of the global matrix is like also an important notion in finite elements. Mm, so assembly process, and that's it. Additional things that we should discuss uh, are the following. You see that we've derived this local matrix based on this formula. So the good question, there are two good questions that we will cover in, in a minute. First of all, how do you efficiently calculate the integrals? Here we had a very, very naive example. We, 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 it was enough just to multiply. So the good question is how do you generally integrate 
in an efficient way. Uh, the other question is, here we were also pretty, pretty happy because we had simple 1D linear shape functions and simple 1D linear elements. So that one was also constant value. But in 2D or in 3D, you need to calculate the shape functions with respect to all two or three spatial dimensions. And in general, it doesn't need to be so easy. Uh, also, the other, um, the other um, difficulty is that, well, we have worked so far with the diffusion matrix. But imagine already the mass matrix. It does not involve the gradients, but the shape functions itself. And you need to integrate all the physical domain over x, y, and these shape functions need to be expressed with respect to x and y, which is not too convenient for generalization. You may, it may be even worse, like um, if you derive the convection matrix, the convection matrix will involve both the shape functions itself and the gradients of the shape function or, or, or test functions, whatever. Uh, so this will be even more complex. Summarize two problems. One of them being the, well, how to efficiently integrate. The other that, well, calculating the values of the shape functions in general into the anywhere. Like, just give, let, let me give you uh, an example. Let's imagine many, many elements in something really strange. And like, what, 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 what's the value of, you know, you've got maybe four shape functions. What's the value, uh, well, exactly here, for x equals 5.7321, uh, y equals 372, uh, what's the value of the second local shape function? You, you don't know, you don't, because you don't even know the explicit formula, how the shape function looks like, okay? That's the main reason why we generally cannot be computing the gradients or the values of the shape functions in such a naive way as we, we, as we could have done here in the simple example. Um, and let me address both problems right now. Well, the, the, this comment about the global and local test functions or shape functions, I assume it's already done. I think you, you understood how, it, how, how it's really globally formulated but computed locally locally wise, element wise.